We work with most of the organizations that I call positive deviants, just on purpose, because it's more fun. But we also are working with big organizations that are trying to make this journey. And I think where that gets interesting and helpful is, is looking at organizations that, so that fundamentally understand that every voice is important, everybody is relevant to the future. If you don't create a system where you are tapping into and creating channels and avenues for everybody to participate, you're kind of behind. Like, so that's sort of the, the, the first order. Um, and where this has worked really brilliantly is when organizations have brought in the models of markets or communities. Because in markets and communities, rather than hierarchies in the industrial organization, there are channels, there are ways for many voices to be heard and different conversations to be had. One of the best examples and a case I encourage you to look at around how do you tap into not just the quiet genius, but all the genius that's hidden, the discretionary effort and imagination and passion that people have and kind of leave at the, at the transom, uh, is an organization named Right Solutions. They're a software company in Providence, Rhode Island, and the guy who founded it was a, like a, a victim, a refugee from running huge defense organizations and software companies. And he, when he started his own company, his design question was, how do I make everybody feel relevant to the future of this organization? And very long story short, they created a market mechanism. It was a kind of a stock market game called Mutual Fund, not Fund. Anyone in the organization would get $10,000 of opinion money. Anyone could float a stock, which is an idea. You became an intellectual capitalist. You had to write an expectus instead of a prospectus. You could list your stock on the SPASDAC or the Bow Jones. You know, it's a very sticky, nice design. And when you go in, it's immediately intuitive. I mean, I've been in it. It's like Monopoly board meets Bloomberg terminal. And every um, there's an algorithm that determines the value of every stock, every portfolio. You can buy and uh, sell your peers, ideas, and stocks. Most importantly, you can sign up to assist, to volunteer. Someone might put a stock up and say, it, it, it might turn into something more of an, uh, uh, sort of an experiment. I need some 80 hours of help from this kind of person. And what they saw was it became this immediate dynamic map of where everyone in the organization sort of thought the future was and where they would put skin in the game, where they wanted to work. And so lots of times, so they, they got, powerful game-changing ideas from unlikely places. The best story of this quiet genius, I thought, was the founder's uh, executive assistant, a woman who knew nothing about the technology, um, was helping her daughter with a homework assignment when the company was working on a bingo algorithm. They do software for casinos, but also for emergency first responders and defense operations. And uh, she said, I think this the pattern recognition thingy could work in an educational environment. That was the extent of her idea. She put it up on mutual fund, and her colleagues kind of glommed onto it and developed it and finessed it, and it turned into a project and an idea that got funded. And it was an idea they uh, uh, sold to Hasbro for X million dollars, and she shared in that. And what Jim said to me was, you know, innovation in companies is often like a gauntlet of charisma. It's the people who are talking and sharing and you know the, those are the creative types in our organization and so how do you create mechanisms to bring those voices forward? And